This is now the part 12 of the LEED V4 Reference Guide for Homes Design and Construction Online Review. Again, all the pictures or images in this video are from Google and USGBC website. If you have comments, suggestions, or complaints regarding the images, pictures, or in this video itself, please email me at nelka underscore rocco at yahoo.com and I will immediately reply to you and take action on whatever the reason of your email. Thank you. Why I created this online reviewer? To help myself and others to pass the lead AP exam in one shot. These are the lead credit categories. On my previous video, we discussed the Sustainable Sites Credit 1, the Heat Island Reduction. Now, we will proceed to Sustainable Sites Credit 2, the Rainwater Management. Rainwater management is the second credit under sustainable sites. It is possible for three points with one exemplary performance. It has two cases. Case 1 is the low impact development and case 2 is the national pollutant discharge elimination system projects. Rainwater management intent to reduce rainwater runoff volume from the site. It is possible for three points. Requirements Projects that must comply with local requirements of the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System or NPDES must follow case number 2. Case 1. Low Impact Development Use Low Impact Development or LID techniques to minimize the amount of stormwater that leaves the site. Examples of acceptable techniques include the following. 1. Planting areas with native or adapted plant material, examples trees and shrubs. 2. Installing a vegetated roof 3. Using permeable paving consisting of porous above-ground materials example open pavers and engineered products A base layer designed to drain water away from the home and often a 6-inch deep or 150 mm sub-base and installing permanent infiltration or collection features example vegetated swell, rain garden and drain water cistern that can handle 100% of the runoff from a 2-year, 24-hour storm. Single-family home projects may use Table 1 or Table 2 to determine points. Multi-family projects must use Table 1. To determine compliance for single-family and multi-family homes, calculate the percentage of the lot area, including the area under roof, that is permeable or can direct water to an on-site catchment or infiltration feature. Table 1. Points for permeable area as percentage of total lot area. Percentage. 50 to 64% is 1 point. 65 to 79% is 2 points. And more than 80% is 3 points. As an alternative approach to determining compliance for single-family homes only, credit is given for reducing the total impermeable area compared to the Energy Star reference home, as listed in Table number 2. Table 2. Conditioned floor area of reference home by number of bedrooms. One bedroom is 93 square meter floor area. Two bedrooms is 148 square meters floor area. Three bedrooms is 204 square meters floor area. Four bedrooms is 260 square meters floor area. Five bedrooms is 315 square meters floor area. Six bedrooms is 371 square meters floor area. 7 bedrooms is 426 square meters floor area and 8 or more bedrooms is plus 55.6 square meters per additional bedrooms. Thresholds for total impermeable area are then calculated according to the values in Table 3, Column 1. Table 3, points for reducing total impermeable area. Impermeable area in square feet. Reference home size number 1, 1 point. Reference home size 0.66, 2 points. Reference home size 0.33, 3 points. Case number 2. National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System or NPDES projects. Using low impact development and green infrastructure to replicate natural site hydrology. Manage on site the runoff from the developed site for the percentile regional or local rainfall events listed on Table 4. 
Use daily rainfall data and the methodology in the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's technical guidance on implementing the stormwater runoff requirements for federal projects under Section 438 of the Energy Independence and Security Act to determine the percentile amount. Table number 4. Points for on-site management of water from rainfall events. Percentile rainfall event. 95th, 2 points. 98th, 3 points. Behind the intent, overloading of storm sewers causes flooding that damages property and water supplies and stormwater runoff erodes both project sites and downstream areas. Allowing rainwater to infiltrate the ground on site keeps water out of storm sewers, where this is not possible or practical, retaining, treating, and then gradually releasing rainwater are acceptable. Step-by-step -step guidance. Projects that must comply with National Pollutant Discharge Elimination Systems or NPDES should consider using case number two which is based on a similar methodology. Case 1. Low Impact Development Step 1. Evaluate design opportunities. Identify any hardscapes that can be specified as permeable surfaces. Identify any impermeable hardscapes and roof areas that can be directed to infiltration features or rainwater catchment systems. Identify any roof areas that can be vegetated. Step 2. Perform calculations. For buildings using Table 1 of the credit requirements, determine the total lot area, including the area under roof, in square feet or square meters. Calculate the net permeable areas, including landscape areas, vegetated roofs, infiltration features such as swales and rain gardens, and pervious paving, and impermeable areas, including the building footprint and all hardscapes. Confirming compliance with credit requirements. See further explanation, example table 1. Rainwater catchment and infiltration feature capacities are based on a 2-year 24-hour rainfall. See further explanation, 2-year 24-hour rainfall. Calculate the equivalent land area for any permanent infiltration features and include it in the total permeable area. See further explanation, example calculation for vegetated swale. Step 3. Select on-site control measures. Confirm with installers that permeable features and rainwater catchment systems will meet credit requirements. Step 4. Install and recalculate to determine compliance. Complete installation of all water management features. Recalculate using data from actual installed measures. Confirm all permeable and impermeable areas following installation. And revise calculations to reflect any changes from Step 1. Further to step-by-step -step guidance, case number 2, NPDES projects. Step 1, obtain rainfall data for the project location. Collect a minimum of 10 years of daily historical rainfall data if at least 10 years of historical data are not available for the project location. Use as much historical data as possible, making sure that data represents a wide variety of seasons to account for seasonal variability. Be prepared to summarize why additional historical data are not available for the project location. Long-term rainfall data for many locations in the U.S. are available through the National Climate Data Center or NCDC. Identify the reference location from the NCDC database or other source that is nearest to the project location and where similar precipitation patterns are expected. For project locations outside the U.S. or other locations where data are not available through the NCDC database, local airports, universities, water treatment plants, or other facilities may also maintain long-term precipitation records. See further explanation international tips. All historical rainfall data must include the location of the monitoring station, the recording time, usually the starting time of a time step, and the total precipitation depth during the time step. Collect daily historical rainfall data from a consistent source whenever possible. If data must be combined from multiple monitoring stations, interpolate or average rainfall data from three or more distant stations around the site to even out any discrepancies with the primary station. Step 2. Determine the value of the 95th or 98th percentile of rainfall events. 
Using the historical rainfall data collected, calculate the rainfall value for the 95th or 98th percentile in inches or millimeters. This is the precipitation amount which 95% or 98% of all rainfall events for the period of record do not exceed. See further explanation percentile of rainfall events. Step 3. Calculate the runoff volume to be managed on site. Calculate the total volume of runoff in cubic feet or cubic meters, corresponding to the 95th or 98th percentile of rainfall events for the site in its post-developed condition. Different methods can be used to calculate the runoff volume, such as the NRCS methodology and the modified rational methodology. Runoff volume depends on the specific post-developed site conditions of the proposed project, such as amount of paving, permeability of different surfaces, roof area, and vegetated areas. This volume is the amount that projects will need to manage entirely on site through green infrastructure and low impact development techniques. See further explanation example table 4. Step 4. Incorporate design strategies to manage the runoff on site. Incorporate green infrastructure and low impact development strategies into the site design in order to manage on site 100% of the total volume of runoff calculated for the 95th or 98th percentile rainfall event and specific developed site conditions. Work with the project's civil engineer, landscape architect, hydrologist, or other qualified professionals to determine design strategies and perform management calculations. See further explanation managing rainwater on site with GI or LID strategies. Use an empirical, statistical, or mathematical method to confirm that the total volume of rainwater managed by the project's GI or LID measures included in the site design are capable of fully containing the total runoff volume calculated through infiltration, evapotranspiration, and or capture and reuse. Examples of common calculation methodologies include the modified rational method, natural resources conservation service method, sometimes called SCS method, as described in Technical Release 55 or TR55, and the US EPA Rainwater Management Model or SWMM. Calculations must account for the site-specific soil characteristics, the soil infiltration rate, and the storage capacity of all GI or LID measures. We will now proceed to further explanation. Percentile of Rainfall Events A percentile rainfall event represents a precipitation amount that the chosen percent of all rainfall events for the period of record do not exceed. For example, the 95th percentile of rainfall events is defined as the measured precipitation depth accumulated over a 24-hour period for the period of record that ranks as the 95th percent rainfall depth based on the range of all daily event occurrences during the period. The 24-hour period is typically defined as 12 a.m. to 11, 59 minutes and 59 seconds p.m. Use the following steps to determine the 95th or 98th percentile of rainfall events. Obtain a long-term daily precipitation data set for the project location, example, from the NCDC website for U.S. projects. In general, a 30-year period of rainfall record is preferred for such an analysis. This raw data is readily available and collected by most airports across the United States. Projects outside the U.S. should reference the Further Explanation International Tips section for more details. At least 10 years of data must be included if available. Import the data into the rainfall events calculator provided by the USGBC or other spreadsheet. If using another spreadsheet, organize daily precipitation records into a single column in any order. Review the records to identify any erroneous data points or any flagged data points. Example, erroneous data points. Remove all erroneous data points from the selected data sheet. Remove small rainfall events less than 0.1 inches or 2.5 mm. The amount of precipitation from these small events would generally not produce any measurable runoff due to absorption, interception, and evaporation by permeable, impermeable, and vegetated surfaces. 
the 95th and 98th percentile rainfall amounts will be calculated by the calculator. If using another spreadsheet software, applying a percentile function or similar will yield the desired percentile. Managing rainwater on-site with GI or LIG strategies In addition to mimicking natural hydrologic cycle processes, GI or LID approaches can optimize connectivity with the surrounding watershed, be well adapted to the local ecosystem and climate, and foster multiple benefits in addition to rainwater management such as water reuse, habitat creation, and species diversity. It is recommended that project teams consult the EPAS National Menu of Stormwater Best Practices. Consider the following points when selecting GI or LID measures for the project. Which GI or LID measures can be applied that best mimic natural site hydrology? How can multiple measures be used together in a treatment train approach to manage rainwater? What are the infiltration rates and capacities of the most practical measures and how do soil conditions impact those measures? What are the types and infiltration rates of existing soil conditions and what design modifications might need to be made, if any, to the best management practices or BMPS in order to satisfy performance goals? How effective are the measures at removing contaminants from the rainwater runoff? Further to managing rainwater on-site with GI or LID strategies. The following table outlines common GI or LID strategies. Table 5, Green Infrastructure and Low Impact Development Summary I will give you some sample images for the following items. Bioretention, rain gardens, tree boxes and infiltration planters, vegetated swells and by swales, packet wetlands, preserving natural vegetation or revegetation, protection of riparian, buffers and floodplains, green roofs, forest pavement, and rainwater harvesting. Sample image number one for bioretention, rain gardens, tree boxes, and infiltration planters. Applicable in most areas including in arid and cold climates with modifications. Best applied on small sites of 5 acres or 2 hectares or less. Applicable in highly urbanized applications. Can be designed for infiltration or filtration. Can contain robust vegetation. Vegetated swells and by swales. Good as one of a series, example treatment train, of best management practices or BMPS used to treat rainwater on site. Typically used for conveyance but provides some infiltration. Filter trips require a relatively large area. Best applied on small sites of 5 acres or 2 hectares or less and with low slopes. Can require irrigation in arid and semi-arid climates. Packet wetlands, applicable outside of highly urbanized areas and arid climates. Preserving natural vegetation or revegetation, applicable to all sites where vegetation exists in a pre-development state or where previously developed areas can be revegetated to mimic a pre-development state. Protection of riparian buffers and floodplains. Appropriate for all sites that are adjacent to a shoreline, stream, wetland, or other water bodies. Existing riparian buffers are protected by restricting or prohibiting construction activities in those areas. Green roofs. Applicable to roofs with a slope of less than 20 degrees. Appropriate for all locations, including dense urban areas. Irrigation systems may be necessary to sustain green roofs, depending on climatic region and planting design. Increased loads on the roof must be incorporated into the building design. Porous pavement. Pervious pavement performs well in pedestrian walkways, sidewalks, driveways, parking lots, and low-volume roadways. Load-bearing and infiltration capacities of the subgrade soil, the infiltration capacity of the pervious concrete, and the storage capacity of the stone based and sub based are the key rainwater design parameters for porous pavement. Not appropriate for high volume or extreme load applications without substantial system thickness. Rainwater harvesting. Widely applicable for most project locations where rainwater harvesting is allowable in the local jurisdiction. 
rainwater has been utilized to reduce potable water usage for landscape irrigation, toilet flushing, cooling, and other site uses. And that's it for the sample of this managing rainwater on site with GI or LID strategies. 2 year 24 hour rainfall. The 2 year 24 hour rainfall for a project site is available at the NOAA website hdsc.nws.noaa.gov slash hdsc slash pdfs slash Select the appropriate state. If the state is dark blue, click the map and choose precipitation depth under data type. Then choose a location close to the site from the drop down list. Entering the latitude and longitude of your property or click the appropriate place on the map. Figure 1 shows the drop-down list for a project site in Charlotte, where a climate station is located. Entering coordinates or clicking on the map allows selection of precise locations that may be farther away from the climate monitoring stations listed in the drop-down menu. Figure 1, Determining Location for Rain Calculation. This image is a screenshot from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration website. Find the 2-year 24-hour depth. The top row lists intervals 2 is equal to 2 years, and the first column lists the duration of the rainfall event. For this site, the 2-year 24-hour rainfall is 3.36 inches. Use this figure to calculate the required land area for infiltration features and rainwater catchment capacity. See Figure 2. Figure 2. The 2-year 24-hour rain calculation for Charlotte. This image is a screenshot from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration website. If the project state is light blue or white, the team must determine the value for the site by reading isopluvial maps. Click on the state to open a screen showing precipitation frequency information and select the document under the heading 1 hour 24 hour. For some states, the resource will be named Technical Paper 40 while for others, it will be from NOAA at last 2. Scroll through the resource to find the 2-year 24-hour rainfall map and find the project site. See Figure 3. Contour lines represent rainfall values in inches. All points along a given line have the same value. For sites in between contour lines, use the higher value, the most conservative approach. In the Albany, New York, example shown in Figure 3, Albany is between the control lines for 2.5 and 3 inches, so the project team uses the 3-inch value. Use the rainfall figure to calculate the required land area for infiltration features and rainwater catchment capacity. Figure 3. Rainfall Map Source National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Still on the further explanation. Example, Table 1. A multi-story housing complex is on a 1-8 acre or 5,445 square foot lot. The complex has a building footprint of 2,000 square feet, with the remainder of the grounds being a combination of hardscapes and softscapes. The complex has a 30 by 24 foot vegetated roof. The lot area excluding the building footprint contains 1,200 square feet of native plants and 850 square feet of permeable paving pathways. The remainder of the area consists of impermeable hardscapes. To calculate the percentage of permeable area on the site, the team first determines the net permeable areas. Vegetated roof, 30 by 24 feet, is equals to 720 square feet. Native plants, 1,200 square feet. Permeable paving is 850 square feet. Total of 2,200 square feet. The total pervious area is then divided by the total lot area. 2,770 divided by 5,445 is equal to 50.8%. Based on Table 1, projects with 50% to 64% permeable area qualify for one point. Example calculation for vegetated swale. A project based in an arbor plants to install a vegetated swale that can manage 800 gallons during one rainfall event. For an arbor, the two-year 24-hour rainfall is roughly 2.4. The swale measures 100 square feet. Half of the project's 2,000 square foot roof will direct water into the vegetated swale. 
The team members need to calculate how much of the roof area qualifies for directing water to a permanent infiltration or collection features. First, they convert the capacity of the swell into cubic feet. 800 gallons multiplied by 0.1336805566 cubic feet per gallon is equals to 106.94 cubic feet. Then they convert this into the square foot equivalent of permeable area. 106.94 cubic feet is the capacity multiplied by 12 inches over feet is the unit conversion multiplied by 1 over 2.4 inches this is the rainfall is equals to 535 square feet. This swell can handle the volume of water from 535 square feet of roof area. Examples Table 2 and 3 The project is a 3-bedroom single-family home in Arn Arbor which has a 2-year, 24-hour rainfall of 2.4 inches. The project site is 1 8 acre or 5,445 square feet and the building has a 40 by 50 foot footprint and two downspouts. Each downspout drains to an 850 gallon rainwater collection cistern. Two-thirds of the lot, excluding the building footprint, is covered with native plants. The team members can calculate either impermeable areas or permeable areas and decide to determine the permeable areas. First, they determine the capacity of the cisterns. In cubic feet, other units of volume could be used. 1,700 gallon multiplied by 0 0.1336805566 cubic feet per gallon is equals to 227.26 cubic feet. Next, they calculate the amount of roof area that can be handled by the cisterns. 227.26 cubic feet, that is the capacity, multiplied by 12 inches per 1 foot, that is the unit conversion, multiplied by 1 over 2.4 inches, that is the rainfall, is equals to 1,136 square foot. If the equivalent land area of the cisterns is larger than the roof area, the equivalent land area is reduced to an area equal to the roof area. Example Table 4 The multi-family project is a six-story building located on a previously developed site in an urban neighborhood. The total site area is 43,000 square feet or 4,000 square meters. Of the total site area, 25,000 square feet or 2,300 square meters are made up of the building footprint and hardscape. Most of the parking is located under the building. The project is located in Denver, Colorado. Figure 4 shows an example site plan showing LID measures. The example project team pulled historical daily rainfall data from the National Climatic Data Center for the previous 10 years. Based on the historical data, the 95th percentile storm was equal to 1.1 inches or 28 mm. Table 6, Rainfall Data Rainfall in inches 1.33 or 34 mm is equal to 99 percentile storm. 1.29 or 33 mm is equal to 98 percentile storm. 1.22 or 31 mm is equal to 97 percentile storm. 1.15 or 29 mm is equals to 96 percentile storm. 1.1 or 28 mm is equals to 95 percentile storm. 1.05 or 27 mm is equals to 94 percentile storm. 1.01 or 26 mm is equals to 93 percentile storm. And 0.96 or 24 mm is equals to 92 percentile storm. In addition to the previous landscaped areas included in the project design, the project team has identified several GI and LID measures to implement including bioretention areas, porous paving and drain garden, and pervious decking to capture rainwater diverted from impervious surfaces. The team determines the expected runoff for the 95th percentile of events by doing the following. Expected runoff from each land cover was calculated using a simple volumetric approach based on the following equation. Runoff is equal to rainfall minus depression storage minus infiltration loss. Where depression storage is the rainfall required for this initiation of runoff and infiltration loss is the amount of rainfall that infiltrates into the ground. Infiltration loss limited to previous areas. 
infiltration loss was estimated by Horton's equation. Once runoff from each land cover was estimated, the total runoff from the site was obtained using a weighted area calculation as shown below. Runoff site is equals to open bracket runoff roof minus A roof plus runoff pavement minus A pavement plus runoff pervious minus A pervious close bracket over A site. To verify that the design site manages all of the rainwater runoff generated during the 95th percentile storm, the team used the direct determination method to verify the area of bioretention required to manage the excess runoff from the developed site. The results are summarized below. Table 7 Example Summary Total area in square feet 43,000 or 4,000 square meters Total imperviousness in percentage 58.1% 95th percentile rainfall event in inches 1.1 or 28 mm Expected runoff for the 95th percentile of rainfall events in inches without bioretention is 0.53 or 13 mm Area of bioretention needed to manage expected runoff in square feet is 1,568 or 145 square meter. Area of bioretention in project design in square feet, 1,800 or 167 square meter. Meets credit criteria, yes. Moving to further explanation, runoff coefficients. Calculations for case 1 use a much simplified method of calculation where impermeable areas are considered to have 100% runoff and permeable areas are to have 0% runoff. Therefore, areas of each type of grand cover can simply be added together to check for compliance. Calculations for case 2, on the other hand, must calculate estimated current runoff using the runoff coefficients. Coefficients for various types of grand cover are usually available through local governments. Another common source of information is the Army Corps of Engineers Civil Reference Manual. Commonly used runoff coefficients are given in Table 8. Table 8. Common runoff coefficients. Surface. Pavement. Asphalt. 0.7 to 0.95 runoff coefficient. Concrete. 0.8 to 0.95 runoff coefficient Brick 0.70 to 0.85 runoff coefficient Roofs 0.75 to 0.95 runoff coefficients Loans, sandy soil, greater than 85% sand Flat, 2% 0.05 to 0.10 runoff coefficient Average, 2.7% 0.1 to 0.15 runoff coefficients Steep 7%, 0 0.15 to 0.20 runoff coefficients. Loans, heavy soil, greater than 40% clay. Flat, 2%, 0 0.13 to 0 0.17 runoff coefficient. Average, 2.7%, 0 0.18 to 0 0.22 runoff coefficient. And steep, 7%, is 0 0.25 to 0 0.35 runoff coefficient. International tips. For projects locations where data is not available through the NCDC database, the Food and Agriculture Organization or FAO of the United Nations water database in Aquastat can be good sources of information for country-level rainwater data. Project teams should try to obtain rainfall data at localized level if at all possible. However, the FAO can be a good first step in reaching that goal. Related credit tips SS Credit Heat Island Reduction Installing permeable options instead of hardscapes is rewarded in this credit too. WE Credit Total Water Use Installing native plants and minimizing turf keeps more water on site while reducing irrigation water needs. Changes from Lead for Homes 2008 All SS4 options have been combined into a single calculation. Case 2 has been added from need for new construction. Option 2 has been added to reward projects that have minimal hardscapes but are also on extremely small lots. Contract language recommendations, none. Technical resources, 2-year 24-hour rainfall calculator, 
you can find this one in the leaduser.com slash strategy slash locating 2-year 24-hour rainfall intensity values EBOM SSC6. Reference Standards EPA National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Exemplary Performance For Case 1, projects that manage 100% of all stormwater on-site earn one additional point for exemplary performance. Verification and Submittals Supporting verification materials made available by the project team. Provide rainfall events calculator or calculations for the chosen percentile storm or least 2-year 24-hour storm. Provide plan detailing hardscape area, total lot area, and any GI or LID locations. Provide calculations for volume of rainwater managed by GI or LID measures. Calculate total permeable area plus hardscape area directing water to be managed on site. Group project. Single calculation can be performed for entire development. For verification team. Conduct on-site verification of that GI or LID elements, example, permeable paving, designed infiltration features, match what was included in plans. Verify calculations of percentage permeable elements. Verify calculations identifying percentile storm or two-year 24-hour storm. Glossary or definition of terms. Infiltration, HVAC. Uncontrolled inward air leakage to condition space through unintentional openings in ceilings, floors, and walls from unconditioned spaces or the outdoors caused by the same pressure differences that induce exfiltration. This is from ASHRAE 62.1 2010. Green infrastructure, a soil and vegetation based approach to wet weather management that is cost effective, sustainable, and environmentally friendly. Green infrastructure management approaches and technologies infiltrate, evapotranspire, capture and reuse stormwater to maintain or restore natural hydrologies, adapted from U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Evapotranspiration, the combination of evaporation and plant transpiration into the atmosphere. Evaporation occurs when liquid water from soil, plant surfaces, or water bodies becomes vapor. Transpiration is the movement of water through a plant and the subsequent loss of water vapor. Reuse The re-employment of materials in the same or the related capacity as their original application, thus extending the lifetime of materials that would otherwise be discarded. Reuse includes the recovery and re-employment of materials recovered from existing building or construction sites, also known as salvage. Natural Site Hydrology The natural land cover, function of water occurrence, distribution, movement, and balance. Previously developed site A site that prior to the project consisted of at least 75% previously developed land. Hardscape The inanimate elements of the building landscaping. It includes pavement, roadways, stone walls, wood and synthetic decking, concrete paths and sidewalks, and concrete, brick, and tile patios. This is the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Watch for the next video. Lead V4 Homes Sustainable Sites Credit 3 Non-Toxic Pest Control. See you again later.